Hey guys, it's Dr. Anthony Davis at the Davis Medical Group in Lindell, Texas, and Body Goal MD, our uh, health and wellness and hormone brand. First, I need your help. See down below, down there, there's a little button that says subscribe. Would you please click subscribe and share this video with your family and friends? Uh, I think this may be one of the most important videos that I've uh, ever done because it is the crucial, most important thing for your health. Today, we're going to talk about a drug that I know you're addicted to. All of you. Sugar. So why would I call sugar a poison? Well, let's we gotta kind of have to go way back in time to when humans were kind of roaming around living a nomadic lifestyle. When did you get sugar? And what kind of sugar did you get? Uh, certainly not what we eat today where if you think about an average meal at an average restaurant, uh, your number one, for example, would be bread, sugar, on meat, on vegetables, with a side of potatoes, sugar, with a drink with sugar in it. So you get multiple forms of sugar. Well, the key is, is what is that going to do to your physiology? Sugar has existed for a long time, particularly in the form of fruit and honey. So why do bears eat fruit and honey? I asked that question in the clinic oh, I don't know, 10 times a day. Why do bears eat fruit and honey? Is it to be lean and healthy or muscular? Uh, no, it's to get fat for winter. So sugar is going to cause you to be fat and hungry. So let's kind of go through the process. It takes all spring and summer for a fruit tree to bear fruit. And the tree will not let you have that fruit until it wants you to have the fruit. And when it wants you to have the fruit, it lowers the lectin concentration, it changes the shape, the color, the smell, it becomes delicious. If you eat it before that, it'll make you sick because the tree does not want you eating its fruit. So the purpose of the fruit is to spread the seed of the tree and the timing of the fruit is to get the seed pooped onto the ground and germinated through your intestinal system at the time the seed needs to be in the ground so that it can go through the winter and then germinate and you get a brand new fancy tree. We benefit at that just like bears do because there's no food in the winter. So the timing of this situation is you go all spring and summer with no sugar, maybe a few berries every now and then, but no sugar. And then boom, you get fruit. Well, you're a frugal eater. You're not going to be picking out. You're going to be healthy. It's not like uh, you know Americans nowadays where we just won't stop eating. We won't stop eating, by the way, about what, because of what I'm about to tell you. So what happens is your brain is a very, very marvelous um, organ. It's sitting there measuring all the things that you might need. So for example, if you're low on water, it'll tell you to drink. If you're low on salt, it'll tell you to eat something salty. If you're low on iron, it'll tell you to eat things like ice and, and chomp on things that, that give you iron. If you're low on sugar, it'll tell you to eat sugar. And since sugar is your fuel, it won't just tell you to eat sugar. It'll force you to eat sugar in a very desperate hormonal way. So here's what happens. Let's just use fruit as our example. So is fruit bad for you? Yes, in the modern world, eaten the way we eat now, which is all the time. So here's when fruit is be good for you. Here's when fruit would be really good for you. You're wandering around, you're, you're very smart, you're very creative eater, you're eating off the land, you're eating plants, you're eating animals, and then all of a sudden, boom, all this fruit shows up. And I would think that the elders of the tribe are going to be pigging out. And the younger people are going to be like, why are they eating so much? We could save that food for later. But guess what? Fruit doesn't save. And that's because the tree doesn't want it to be saved. The tree wants its seed eaten and planted immediately. So here's what happens inside of you. You have a genetic sugar craving inside of you. Because when you find sugar, you're not supposed to just eat two apples, which would make you full. But it's sugar, so it can't make you full. Your brain and your stomach and artery system are not connected at this point. Your brain is measuring your blood sugar, so it's here. Your blood sugar is going across like this and you eat something with sugar in it, and back in the story that I'm telling, it's fruit and honey, and your blood sugar shoots up. There's a natural tripwire that gets tripped and your body senses this boon, this surge of sugar, and it's loving that idea because it's been looking for this situation and it releases insulin. Insulin sheds the inner lining of the artery, which allows the sugar to just leave the artery. Where does it go? Into the tissue. Well, what's out there in the tissue? The fat cells. 
What are the fat cells doing in response to insulin? They're vacuuming up all that sugar and turning it into stored future fuel, fat. So fat is food for later. Guess what's coming right around the corner after this two week of fruit boon is over? Winter. And you guess what? You're not supposed to have grocery stores or restaurants or pantries. You're supposed to be living as part of nature. So winter comes and thank God you got fat on all that fruit and that honey. Because now you have a forced three month fast coming and you're not gonna get a whole lot of food. Big deal, you got your big old fat tummy. So here's the deal. You eat the first apple, your blood sugar's here. I mean, your brain is measuring your sugar, it's here. Your blood sugar spikes, insulin gets released and your blood sugar goes away. So your brain senses this crashing blood sugar. So your brain doesn't know what's happened. Your brain thinks you're starving to death. Your brain thinks you're about to die. So it sends out two very powerful hormones. Hormone number one is adrenaline, which makes the fight or flight response. So it makes you hungry and panic, excuse me, it makes you panicked. And it releases cortisol, which is a hormone that makes you crave sugar. So now you have a hormonally driven, adrenaline-based panic, fight or flight hormone, making you desperately hungry, desperate, and cortisol making you hungry. So you become desperately hungry for sugar. So the fourth, fifth, tenth piece of fruit, it becomes easy because you're buying. So you're literally, you've had 10,000 calories and you're still hungry. So let's go back to the fast food restaurant. So you sit down and you eat the bun, take the bun away and eat just the meat, you get full. Your brain is okay, 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 that's enough food. Your blood sugar kind of climbed a little bit. Your brain turned hunger off. You eat the bun, which is sugar, and your blood sugar crashes, and your brain tells you that you're desperately hungry. So you eat all the french fries, and now you're still desperately hungry. So you drink the whole soda. You're still desperately hungry. You had 2,000 calories, and you're starving to death. You have low blood sugar. Your brain feels like you're dying. Where did the sugar go? Into the fat cells. Into the fat cells. The fats took all the sugar. And this is a normal physiologic response because when you stumbled across that fruit tree, you were supposed to gorge on it. Gorge, 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 because there was a narrow two week window when that was gonna be allowed to happen. And it would turn off automatically because nature would stop providing the sugar. But we are smarter than nature, right? We, we know better. So we fill our pantries and our houses and our restaurants with sugar and we eat it all the time. And we say things like, I'm addicted to sugar. No, you're not. Your body's responding appropriately to sugar. That's what's supposed to happen when you find sugar. What you are um, deficient on is knowledge. You're deficient on wisdom. The wisdom is we live in a world today where sugar will kill you. And not only that, it's addicting. It's pleasurable. Your body enjoys it because it's supposed to, because it's supposed to have a very narrow window and a very limited supply. Um, it hits the pleasure button. It makes you want more and more and more. So the only solution to having abundant food is avoiding the things that make you fat and hungry. So here's your choice. This is easy. You won't have a choice. You want to be full or hungry. Sugar makes you hungry. You want to be fat or a healthier weight. Sugar makes you fat. So you eat sugar, you'll be fat and hungry. So let's define sugar. I already told you fruit and honey are bad for you. Argue with me if you want to. Are there healthy people eating fruit and honey? Yeah, but they're probably being very conscientious with their lifestyle. The average American eating the standard American diet should not have sugar. You might as well eat candy bars. You might as well eat Skittles. Um, so is apple healthier than cake? I'd say no, it's not. Because they both release insulin and they both make you fat. Do you know the number one cause of death in this country is stroke and heart attack from blocked arteries? If you're a diabetic, which means you have a sugar problem, you're 80% increased risk of a stroke or heart attack above people who aren't diabetic. So is it a cholesterol problem because of blocked arteries or is it a sugar problem causing blocked arteries? It's a insulin problem, it's a sugar problem. Otherwise diabetics wouldn't have an increased risk. Here's what happens. The lining of the artery wall is something called the glycocalyx, glycocalyx. It is a crystalline carpet, a structure. It's like a beard and it grows and it lines the inner lining of the artery. And it has two main purposes. It's First purpose is to seal the artery so sugar can't leak out. Otherwise, sugar just leaks out. Your arteries cannot contain it. It's too little and there's too much pressure. So the sugar will just shoot out. For those times when you find it and you need to fill your fat cells as fast as possible, 
Number two, it repels, electronically repels, all the other things in the artery away from the artery wall like fat and cholesterol. And fat and cholesterol just slides through and never sticks anywhere until it gets delivered where it needs to be processed for either hormone production or energy um, or whatever, whatever manufacturing of cells or collagen or tissue that you need. Okay. Well, we need to rapidly deploy the sugar when we have an abundance of it. So what, what chemical could possibly dissolve that lining instantaneously? Insulin. So you squirt insulin out. Every time your blood sugar shoots up, you squirt insulin out because this is never supposed to happen. It's an extremely rare event for your sugar to shoot up. So insulin gets released. You dissolve your glycocalyx. Simultaneously, the fat cells turn on like vacuum cleaners and all the sugar just sprays out of your arteries and goes out into the tissue. Their fat cells are waiting and they suck it up. So number one thing that happens when you eat sugar is you release insulin. Number two, you dissolve your glycocalyx. Number three, your blood sugar crashes. Number four, your fat cells fill up and get bigger. Number five, your brain senses the crashing blood sugar, releases adrenaline and cortisol to save your life so that you don't pass out. So you eat more sugar desperately because guess what? It's available. The fruit trees are ripe. But we live in a world where we create our own sugar habits, and so we have tons and tons of sugar, so we go reach for more. We serve ourselves some more pasta, some more bread. We order dessert. We get another soda. We snack. We crave. We are bottoming out all the time because our insulin has dissolved our glycocalyx, and our fat cells are sucking up our blood sugar all the time until we become insulin resistant, insulin resistant because so much insulin has been released, and our blood sugar starts climbing because it can't get out of the artery and now, unfortunately, your body starts starving to death. A diabetic has too much, excuse me, too little blood sugar, too little body sugar. Let me say it correctly. Too much sugar in their bloodstream, but their brain and their nerve cells and their kidneys are starving to death because the sugar can't get into their body. It can't get through the artery because the glycocalyx and all the tissues become resistant to the insulin because there's been too much of it being released and the whole system breaks down. So to cure yourself, from a sugar problem and obesity and the risk of heart disease from hyperinsulinemia, too much insulin being released, is to stop eating foods that release insulin. Okay? The only foods that don't release insulin at a reasonable amount, there's more than one kind of insulin release, but are going to be proteins, typically animal-based, and above-the-ground vegetables. Below-the-ground vegetables will caramelize when you cook them in a pan because they're full of sugar, are they bad for you? Unfortunately, yes, in this day and age where we go with abundant food. Fruit, honey, flour, sugar, potatoes, rice, sugar. The old adage, if it's white, get rid of it. Well, that's true. Why? Because they're all just different forms of sugar. They may not taste sweet, but that's the most dangerous ones because you'll eat them. So you got to get rid of the sugars. You got to get rid of the sugars. Um, every successful diet on this planet involves that. Now, if you're an exercise buff, if you're a fitness nut and you're really paid attention to your portions and your calories and you're balancing your macros, obviously you can bring in some rice and you can bring in some fruit and you can eat those things. But in general, if you're eating a standard American diet, the only solution to your sugar problem is to quit eating it. Guess what? You're no longer hungry and you feel full all the time. Don't you want that? And when you feel full, you stop eating. And guess what? This is the most important point. The most important point. When you wake up in the morning, your body has a choice. Fat burn mode, using fat for fuel, or fat storage mode, storing sugar as fat for future use. When you wake up, your default setting is fat burn, burning fat. You have to ruin that, or well, not even ruin it, you have to flip the switch. You have to do something, eat something that releases insulin, and you put yourself into a fat storage mode. You dissolve your glycocalyx, your fat cells open up and start vacuuming at the sugar, and that takes a minimum of 12 hours to recover from. So the only rule is, is what you're trying to be, a fat burner or a fat storer. You will be a fat storer if you choose to eat flour, sugar, potatoes, rice, fruit, honey, anything that releases insulin, and that triggers a fat, an insulin release in a fat storage mode. You will be a fat burner if you can keep, keep, if you eat things that don't release insulin, meat and above the ground vegetables and uh, full fat products like cream and butter and avocados and olives, full fat foods. So that's my word for the day. Sugar is a drug.
Fat is fuel. So fuel your body. Don't drug your body. I hope you have a great day. I know it's a little long. Uh, call us if you need anything. Bye.